change your heart, change your life, change the planet. So there's a situation that I experience a lot, and it's something that I think you're dealing with right now as well, that when you're talking to someone who is depressed, there are two different experiences happening in that conversation. From your perspective, you're trying to cheer them up by acknowledging something that you like in them or that you see in them. Uh, you, as you stated, you tell them that you think they're fantastic. And this is something that feels good to you because you're acknowledging a truth for you about them. Even though they're depressed, you still think they're fantastic. And that seems like a very generous thing to do. And it is. But on the other side, from the depressed person's perspective, and I can tell you from personal experience, <laughs> that if someone were to say to me, I think you're fantastic, to me, that sounds like they're not seeing me. To me, that comes across as, yeah, that may be true from your perspective. That may be an experience that you have of me, but it's not who I am in this moment. It's not what I'm feeling in this moment. I'm not feeling fantastic. Nothing in my life right now seems or could be described as fantastic. So it it sounds like you're describing a different world, another dimension, like you're seeing a version of me that exists in another dimension. So here's what I recommend and here's what I communicate when something like this happens. Depression hits you from two angles. One is the physical angle that actually changes how you experience your body, but then it also affects how you tell your story, how you tell your autobiography and where you see yourself in it. And how depression relates to that second component is that it removes your ability to see a positive future or to see a coherent future. So when most people compliment, they compliment very generally, especially if you're looking at someone and you can't see something specific in this moment to compliment because that person is obviously struggling, you're going to find something general or abstract like the word that you chose earlier, fantastic. But from the depressed perspective, that's a term that their brain doesn't know what to do with. It's so abstract and so general and so not relatable to the experience that they're having that there's really only one option for them, to shut down the channel of communication, to push away because that just feels unsafe. And a lot of what depression is physically is that the body is telling the mind, you're not safe. You've created a personality, you've created a life, you've created a, a series of events that have beaten you down over and over again, and we can't survive much more of that. So the body says, I'm going to look at every situation through the lens of safe or not safe. And if I deem that it's even slightly unsafe, I'm going to pull you out of that situation. So when someone uses a general term as a compliment or as a means to cheer someone up, since I can't relate to that, then my brain says, ooh, that person doesn't see you. And because that person doesn't see you, they're likely to do something that's going to hurt you because they can't see your broken spots. They can't see your triggers. They can't see the things in you that are incredibly vulnerable. So you've got to be really careful around this person because they're not seeing you. They're seeing a projected image onto you. And that projected image is covering up your boo-boos. <laughs> so what I've communicated in the past with someone that was trying to help me or cheer me up is that it really, really helps to talk about specifics. So if your goal is to help me to feel different or to shift me into a different place, it's got to be incredibly specific, as in what is specifically happening in this room right here that I'm sitting in, what's happening with the jacket that I might be wearing, or whatever it is, it's got to be about this moment as a physical experience because that's where depressed people live, or at least that's where they can take steps. 
they can function with the specific, but they can't function with the general or the abstract anymore. Their body and brain will not allow them to. So if you want to have a, a conversation that actually does shift someone dealing with depression, it's got to be incredibly specific. And that doesn't mean that you can't compliment them. It just means that it's got to be related to something specific. <laughs> very, very specific. Again, I know from experience that it's very hard for me to model things that are positive when I'm depressed. In fact, it's nearly impossible. So if you say something, I have to process what you said. I have to try to understand it. I have to try to model how it relates to me. And if I can't find a place to map it, I have to reject it because I can't imagine it. So when you're depressed, your imagination is pretty much limited to the negative. Your brain does that. It says, well, we'll allow you to have imaginative capabilities, but they're just going to be for bad stuff because that will keep you safe. But if we allow you to imagine good things, you're likely to do things that you're not ready to do yet. You're likely to become confident. You're likely to go take steps that are not safe. And we can't have that right now. So this is a way that you can communicate, not just with a depressed person, but as a depressed person. This is also how I talk to myself. So in many of my videos, you've probably seen that I talk about tiny, tiny, tiny steps because they're safe and they're specific. Like if I were to say to myself, Tim, let's go for a run. Way too general, way too abstract. I don't know how to take this body and put it into this thing called go for a run. But I do know how to look for a pair of socks. And I do know how to find a shirt. And I do know how to touch a doorknob and slowly twist it open while feeling the temperature change in my hand. I know how to do those kinds of things, but I don't know how to go for a run. So it's the same style of communication with oneself when you're depressed and when talking with someone else. And the challenge is that if somebody is complimenting you and someone is really committed to you, you don't want to push them away, but your brain and body are going to do that. So it's important to mention that this is happening. And a lot of people really haven't thought about what is happening when somebody compliments them. They just know that they have to reject it. And this is one of the things that depressed people have to deal with on a regular basis is that someone tries to help them and they have to push it away. And then the person that gave them the compliment or tried to cheer them up feels dissed. It's like, dude, I was trying to be nice and you pushed me away. So it helps both people if they can both understand that uh, a depressed person can really only tolerate specific communication. That's the only type that's safe. I think it's really important to take a look at how you're relating to them and, and what you're saying. Is it general or is it specific? Is it abstract or is it applicable? And think about that and maybe even ask some questions. I want to compliment you right now. Can you receive that compliment? Do you know what to do with that compliment? Or is that just going to be something that you're going to push back on? So you can ask. And if the person thinks about it, maybe they'll come to this realization. It took me a long time to really be able to articulate this. Uh, but if you ask them, maybe they'll see that, yeah, you know what, you're right. But if you talk about something that I'm doing right now, then it's not a lie because the general abstract stuff just seems like a lie because it doesn't fit in the world. Again, depressed people are right here. And I mean that literally because they've shifted into the right part of their prefrontal cortex, the right side. Uh, and people that are in a more abstract means of communication and thinking have what they call a left shift. Uh, and they tend to be happier. <laughs> so you've got to talk about what's right here, what's present. And if you don't know what is present, you can ask. So when I'm dealing with clients who are in a really challenged state, rather than tell them about their environment, because I don't know, I have to ask them, what's in your environment right now? What's within arm's reach? What are your feet touching? What are you looking at? Find out about their environment. 
uh, and maybe you're on a video call, you can say, hey, pick up the camera, show me around the room, what's going on? Uh, and then help them deal with that specific environment. Hey, you moved that over there. It looks like you cleaned that up. Great job. Awesome. I bet that feels better to have that organized like that. Something, but specific. Uh, 